Al, we took a week and we finally watched this movie. We did. You know, it was well worth the wait, clearly. <laughs> you know, we just had to had to watch a movie. It's true. Uh, so yeah, that's what we did this week. Hello, welcome to this week's episode of Jared is Now Watching Yasha is episode 97. Mm-hmm. I'm Jared, joined as always by Doc Al and Lady M. Hello, hello. Uh, we are discussing, 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 <laughs> Into Yasha the movie number two, The Castle Beyond the Looking Glass. Mm-hmm. It is the second Inu Yasha movie. It is. That was released between episodes 95 and 96 in Japan on December 21st of 2002. It was also put out in the U.S. two years later on December 28th, 2004. You want some history in that regard? Always. But yeah, this is the second Inu Yasha movie. Uh, it is, again, non-canon stuff. Uh, but if you want to see Inuyasha and the gang look more like their manga counterparts and have and be involved in some better animation, then here you go. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So there's that. Uh, yeah, this movie, this movie's okay. <laughs> it's fine. It's okay. Um, like, there are worse ways we could have spent our time. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's interesting that they kick it off with the, the bait and switch they do. Yeah. Because I was waiting for the other shoe to drop. I'm like, all right, how do they fix this to get it <laughs> back to... How do they fix this problem? To get it back to where it should be. Which uh, right. the, the, the bait and switch here is that they kill Naraku in the first 10 minutes of this film. <laughs> yep. And he goes down really easy. He does. And then everyone's like, all right, cool. Everything's fine. Now, Baroku doesn't have the wind tunnel. Everyone's like, all right, now what do we do now? <laughs> Yeah, everybody kind of, like, splits up. They split up to do their own thing. Uh, Sango finds Kohaku. Uh, Moroku goes on a journey to find... He get, or he basically goes and, like, talks to this dude who gives him, like, a letter from his grandpa or something. Mm-hmm. And that sets him off on his own journey. Uh, uh, Kagome goes back to her present time and has to go to school, and she's real bummed about it. And Inuyasha's just Inuyasha. You know, he's just doing whatever he wants. Doing his thing. There's a fun. Uh, or he also he also comes back to the present time because he's like, hey, we gotta go. We, he wants to bring Kagomi back to get more of the the jewel shards because they still gotta do that. That's their they're mm-hmm. still that's still a main thing they gotta do. So he has to go like wrangle her back, <laughs> even though she's like, I look, it's fine. You don't have to come get me. It's okay. <laughs> uh, she also gets some soda and a, and some tickets to the fair from Hojo, mm-hmm. which she immediately gives to one of her friends and leaves with her brother. <laughs> yep. It's like, oh, okay. Rip. So Which they're, they're conveniently learning in school about the the tale of the bamboo cutter. Mm-hmm. And Princess Kaguya. Real interesting. Wow, interesting. Also worth mentioning that um Inayasha was a human during that fight. Yeah, so they had to hide him away because they still don't want Naraku to find out about that and then the sun comes up and he's like, "Blah, hello." Blah. It's the weirdest sunrise ever. Also, Moroku just like cops a feel in the middle of the fight, and I was like, "Y'all aren't even taking this seriously," yeah. and you still take him down. Yeah, <laughs> like obviously something's wrong here. Hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, you get some soda and tickets, and then you leave them goodbye. Yeah. Uh, we see Kagura and Kana for the first time in a while. Oh, oh! Did we not talk about the the the, the picture booth? Oh, yeah, there is a picture booth that Inuyasha and Kagome get thrown into by uh, Sota. Sota because they're making a scene. He's like, I gotta get these guys out of here so they're not making a scene. So he, they throw he thrown into a photo booth and he puts he turns the photo booth on to take pictures of them. And Inuyasha does not know what these flashing lights mean. So he tries to iron a soul stealer it. And she's like, stop it. <laughs> They end up taking a bunch of pictures of them yelling, and then she puts them into a locket and is like, "Here you go, you can wear this." And he's like, "I, I, I don't. This doesn't. I, this doesn't look good on me. No, this I wouldn't ain't wear my style. this. This is not my style, man. Why, why, why would I wear something stupid like this?" He's like, "It'll grant you a wish." She's like, he's like, "All right, whatever." I'm still not gonna wear it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, continue on. We, Kagura and, and um, uh. 
Kana. 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 I forgot her name for a minute. They're I'm hanging out. Sad, sad they realize her. Noraku's dead, and then Kana's like, all right, let's go do this other thing. <laughs> <laughs> and Kagura's like, all right, whatever. I guess I'll follow you for now. Um, everyone eventually meets back up again together after everything went down, which they, they kind of imply that there's been a passage of time. Mm-hmm. Um, that has occurred in between the death of Naraku and when they all meet back up. Uh, they're in a hot spring hanging out. This weird dude is like spying on them and Moroku's like, hey, what are you doing? Get out of here. But Sango thinks it's Moroku doing that. Even- He's like, no, look, this is not me this time. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to stop somebody else from doing it. And Yasha rolls in and is like, I, is there someone we got to fight someone? And then uh, he gets thrown into the hot spring and Kagome's like, ah. Sit. Bad things happening, of course. Um, I do like that the the interloper, who is definitely not somebody named Hojo, um, calls her a celestial maiden as he's like watching her be naked. Uh huh. It's like it's like, bro, you're a perv. Like, chill out. <laughs> that is the thing, and then everyone splits up again so they can go find jewel shards and stuff and do other things. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, Kagura and Kana are off doing their own thing and they find this mirror that awakens a lady in a mirror who says she is Kaguya. Princess Kaguya. Whoa. And Kaguya's like, hey, Kagura, I'll give you what you actually want. If you help me, you get free. And they're like, all right, let's go find these five items out for you. Which was uh, interesting because it's like, here's another story that I've watched in the last five years about Princess Kaguya. <laughs> It is, it's, it's this, the Sailor Moon S movie, mm-hmm. and then basically the end of Naruto. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, she comes up a lot in, like, Japanese media. It's true. It is indeed true. Uh, yeah, they, Everyone's doing their own thing, blah, blah, blah. All of that. And Yasha loses his sleeve. Because mm-hmm. ha- he has a run into with Kagura, and he loses his sleeve because they needed the sleeve as and part of the salty. five five items. Yeah, and he's very salty about it. And um, is it is it Hojo that calls him sloppy, or is it like one of the the dudes on the bridge that calls him sloppy? But regardless, Inuyasha like loses his. No, I think it's like Moroku. Moroku. When Somebody they calls meet him back sloppy. up way later, he's like, or Moroku or Songo. Or, so Songo, he's like, he's like Songo. Why you, you don't usually dress as sloppily? Then he just punches Moroku for it. Right, 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 right. You're right. You're right. Okay. Um. Either way, he does get mad on the bridge and throw people. Yeah, out. he's. They're just walking and uh, going places, and then like he's very mad, and these dudes are accosting fake Hojo, and he and Yasha just ru- walks through them, and then basically is just like. They're like, what are you trying to do, huh? And Shippo the whole time is like, yeah, you probably shouldn't do that. He's in a He's real in a bad, bad mood. mood. And he just like flings them all into the river. And uh, Not Hojo is basically like, here's some Mekon for you for help and save me. I'm trying to take this celestial celestial robe to Mount Fuji. Hooray. So um, he drops the rest of his Mekon in the river, which he does. is very sad. Very sad. And then he just tags along with them because Shippo also realizes that this is the dude who was pervin on the gals. Mm-hmm. And he makes and he makes him his servant. Basically, yeah. Mm-hmm. And Kagome really is like, oh, hey, yeah, this must be his ancestor or something because he looks just like Ojo and acts a lot like Ojo. Uh-huh. Except for this guy seems kind of uh, more of a disaster case than yes. like the current Hojo. For sure. Uh, Kikyo's here. She's trying to find out why how Naraku's dead and everything, and then she gets a cool bowl that later on she just immediately gives to Kagura. Mm-hmm. He's like, I don't need this. Whatever. Here you go. Who cares? <laughs> uh, Baroku's doing his thing. Mm-hmm. Kagura takes the thing from Songa's village, which is real rude. Very. Uh, ba ba ba. And then they they basically uh, free Kaguya from the mirror, and she's she's out there, and she's free. Also, it's worth mentioning that there have been, like, full moons every single night. Yes, and they're like, that's weird. Huh. 
Uh, there's a moment with Inuyasha and Kagome on the river where she's like, you should just stay a half demon. It'll be fine. He's like, oh, I want to do that. Oh, I just want to be a demon. <laughs> and then a big Sakura tree spawns behind them. <laughs> mm-hmm. And Kaguya shows up and is like, hey, how's it going? Uh, Inuyasha, you want to get pinned to a tree? Yay. Here you go. Blip. Uh, Kagome shoots her with an arrow, and she's like, no, oh, that's that's not, that's unfortunate. And then she shoots her again, but Kaguya absorbs it into the mirror and then shoots it back at her. Uh-huh. And then Kagome sacrifices herself to not let Inuyasha not get shot by the arrow. But she also gets wrapped up with the celestial robe, which helps her. And she's like, oh, you're, you're fine. Bleh. Yeah, yeah. Hojo, like, threw it to try and, like, prevent her from getting hit somehow. Uh-huh. Um, but it ended up just getting pinned to her with an arrow. Yep. Whoops. So Kaguya takes the celestial robe and is like, ah, uh, and it also takes she takes Kagome and she's like, uh, see you later, losers. I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm gonna go to my cool dream castle. Ha 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 ha. Uh, and Inuyasha is very upset by this. Mm-hmm. But luckily, uh, as soon as Kaguya leaves, the tree just dies, and then he's able to break free, and he's like, ah. I'm going to go. Shippo, where's this castle at? Shippo's like, I don't know. Uh, Fake Kojo's also be like, hey, I heard about this castle. It's on this lake. You know, maybe that's the, that's what she's talking about. All right, let's go. Uh, Kage is in her cool castle. She's uh, Everyone's basically converging onto the castle. The gang is in separate, separate ways and everything, so... Kage is basically using weird monsters in the in the lake to try and fend them off and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, she she sends uh, Kagura tries to turn on her with Kana, but then Kage is like yeet yeet you into like the, the dream river or whatever. Have fun. Never to be seen from again in this movie. <laughs> yeah, they they didn't really give them any kind of conclusion. Nope. Um, Inuyasha shows up and he's like, I'm going to fight. Arg, arg. But then Kage unleashes her cool magical time spells. And things go bad for everyone. There's also like a multi-headed critter at one point. The, the sea dragon. Yeah. That was the thing. But yeah, everybody survives the time stop issue. Well, most everybody. Everyone important. <laughs> Everyone important that should take place in the in the baddie baddie the battle, um, because they use Kagome's um, band aids. And Inuyasha has the the pendant, and they're basically I didn't all these. Know that yet? Well, yeah, it's the same thing. It's whatever. <laughs> you you just see the the like glint under his shirt at this point. But basically, all these things that Kagome has like had in her possession or like touched is like has spiritual power now and is able to right. not be affected by this time magic. You know, normal things. And specifically stuff that she brought back from her era. Correct. So that probably also mm-hmm. is some some kind of fanciness with it. I don't know. I don't know how time shit works. So the gang's all together, but they're like, the castle's gone. We got to figure out what's happening. And they're like, oh, look, it's in the reflection of the lake. We got to hit the lake and then we'll just be like, jump in and we'll be back at the castle that's basically what happens ship almost gets left behind because he's just a kid he's just a little guy he's just a little guy but yeah everyone uh they get back to the castle and it's time to do some more fighting yay we gotta do more fighting yay fighting that's basically the rest of the movie that's yeah that's basically the rest of the movie where everyone's trying to fight <laughs> kaguya not having a whole lot of success um, also, Moroku, like, repaints his wind tunnel on his hand at one point very he badly. He sure does. It's just like, oh, I just, you know, I don't feel right with this. And he's like, it looks like he's putting, like, a nice circle. But then you look at his hands like it's just a splotch. It's just like, a, what are you doing, my dude? Huge mess. He's like, well, I guess I can't do this very well. With, is it his left hand that he's painting with? It's one of those hands. Yeah. I never remember which one his wind tunnel's in. Mm-hmm. I think it's right hand. Anyway, we fight. We do a lot of fighting. Uh, things aren't going so well, uh, but Inuyasha is able to get his sleeve back, which is nice. Yay, sleeve. And then 
we find out that Kaguya is not just Kaguya, but is a demon who absorbed Kaguya. Mm-hmm. Real rude. Very rude. And she's like, hey, Inuyasha, you want to be a full demon, right? Huh? Huh? So, yeah, she tries to do her mirror thing where, like, she's like, here's your full demon part. This is what you really want to be. Now you could go and be a full demon. Have fun with that. And Inuyasha starts transforming, and everyone's like, we can't let him transform, but we can't stop him either. Oh, no. Yeah, Maroka even gets, like, f***ed up at one point. Like, he gets, he gets a little scratched. clawed, yeah. Shippo's like, I'm going to just get you out of there, Kagome. He gets electrocuted, and then she's like, hey, grab my jewel, shard. jewel shards and fling them at me. He's like, Which all she right. only has two, and I'm like, well, that's embarrassing, you guys. You've been doing this for a while, and you well, only they have lost two. all their their ones they had because Naraku stole them, and th this yes. is like the the leftovers they've been able to to capture. It's really embarrassing. So he does that, and she's able to break herself free and everything, and she's like, "Yeah, don't do it, uh, don't do it. I, I love you as a half demon." Uh. <laughs> and Yasha is struggling, and then she kisses his teeth. <laughs> And he's like, Whoa. oh, guess I can be a half demon. And then he kisses her back, but yeah. he actually does shut his mouth, so she's not kissing his teeth anymore. <laughs> he's like, can you imagine how awkward it'd be? Like, you come back to yourself and, like, the girl that you supposedly don't have feelings for, but probably have feelings for, is just, like, smooching your teeth. <laughs> girl, you're bad at this. <laughs> <laughs> he's like oh man I'm having second thoughts now uh, anyway I'll kiss you I'm 15 <laughs> it's fine uh, he also tells her he's going to be a half demon just a little while longer just for just her just a little while longer um, Moroku wants to do the same thing with Songo but she, she goes immediately to check on uh, Kawaku who is like oh my shoulder is burning and she's like oh god there's a spider on your back that spider oh, just, yo. like, grows and grows and grows, and oh, God, it's Naraku. He's back, and then the wind tunnel's back, and they're like, why are you back? And he's like, ha-ha, I faked my death so I could draw Kagi out. Now I'm going to absorb her. Ha-ha. Yay. Everyone's like, "You're. this is a very convoluted plan. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and basically they're like, look, we could try and get one but they're, the other ones is probably going to absorb the uh, if we killed one of them so like we're kind of in a bad spot here what oh, do no. we do and Yasha basically charges in because he's dumb and he's like I'm going to do this myself <laughs> reader he does not no he gets yanked away by the wind tunnel at one point to get out damage and he's really mad about it Roku does like a reverse yeet on him with yes. the wind tunnel uh Kagome makes Shippo transform into a bow, and she uses Moroku's staff as an arrow and uh, shoots Kaguya, along with Inuyasha using the backlash wave. So they're able to kind of destroy Kaguya a little bit. Um, the castle is falling around them, but then Kaguya... Yeah, because the mirror gets shattered by the, yes. the arrow. Kaguya shows back up as a cloud. She's like, I'm going to take over Kagome! Ha 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 ha! Yay! And Moroku's like, no, I'm just going to use the wind tunnel and suck you up. <laughs> All right, cool. That doesn't seem healthy. Naraku gets chopped it, like chopped up again and it just has his like human body part again. But then he's able to get out of there with uh, Kohaku and apparently the other two as well. That's what it says here, but I, I don't remember seeing them, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, I don't remember seeing them either. So they're like, oh, no, the, the castle's falling. Like, what do we do? Well, I guess we'll just follow the, the other two, the other guys through the mirror, mm -hmm. and then we'll get back to where we were. Shippo gets scared because he's like, oh, no, I'm going to be left behind. She's going to come get me. But they wake up in a field and everything's fine. It was a dream. Castle's disappearing. The, the giant star in the sky is disappearing. And they're like, yay, it's over. But also, Naraku lives. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. We actually haven't accomplished anything. Mm -hmm. Rip. Uh, Moroku says that Kaguya was indeed a beauty like his grandpa thought, and everyone's just like, oh, God. You fool. You dumbass. You dummy. And then he also wants to kiss uh, Sango, and he's like, no. Which then has Inuyasha and Kagome arguing about it, because 
he's like, well, I didn't even want to or anything. You you forced yourself on me. Yeah. Which I mean, is not completely inaccurate, but and he's just making um, it worse and worse on himself. Yeah, he gets he gets sitted. And then uh, Shippo's is like, grow up. Grow up. And the movie ends. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! So there's that. Congratulations. The movie two is over. This this was a film. That was indeed a film. Uh, let's talk about trivia and some goofs. Oh wow, that's a lot of trivia. More trivia. This marks the first time uh, Akatoki Hojo has appeared in the series. Wait, does he appear again? I don't remember. Apparently him. so. Later on, we will talk about that. No, uh, this is the only movie where Naraku, Kohaku, Kagura, and Kana appear. Okay. Uh, when Hojo sees Kagome, Sango, and Shippo bathing in the spring and narrowly avoids their notice and their wrath, and also comments on how the girls look like celestial maidens, but escapes and Moroku is punished instead, it parallels Kaguya's own history in which she, a celestial maiden, was bathing in a spring like Sango and Kagome and is spotted by a passerby who steals the celestial robe from her, which leads to her angrily attacking innocent villagers who happen to be nearby like Moroku was attacked by Sango. Two, no. two other coincidences with this matter are that Hojo, like the man, man in Kaguya's past, was in possession of the celestial robe, and that both situations involved a monk, either Moroku or his grandfather, monk Miyatsu. Hmm. This movie also marks Inuyasha and Kagome's first kiss. Oh, snap, and she kissed his teeth. Yep. This is the only movie in which neither Jokin nor Rin make an appearance. Hmm. Even though we see Seshimaru for like one second. One second. Uh, Cherry from Urasai Yatsura can be spotted appearing as a Jizo statue midway through the film. Is that the very angry one? It's the it's the one pictured here. Okay, yeah. Uh, which is which is obviously it's a another Rumiko Takahashi manga that she wrote. Right, right, right. Uh, this is the first time that Inuyasha transforms into his demon form in a movie, and his fifth time in the series overall. <gasps> Uh, though the episodes up to Naraku's in return make no reference to him coming out of hiding in this film, uh, Akatoki Hojo returns in episode 137, and it is made clear he has met the protagonist before, plus Akatoki being Shippo's vassal is directly mentioned, thus the movie is the first to be referenced in an episode. So it is kind of canonical, I guess? Somewhat. Somewhat. Uh, in order to convincingly fake his death, Naraku returns Kagura's heart, apparently through sorcery, though it is unclear how he was able to reclaim it after the events of the movie without killing her. Uh, Kana manipulates Kagura throughout the movie in order to advance Naraku's agenda, and Kagura, despite her ant- antip- antipathy towards Naraku, never becomes suspicious of why Kana, who is loyal to Naraku and has no emotions, is so interested in first reviving Kaguya, then turning Kagura against her. Nor does she become suspicious of why Kohaku, another servant and for- former servant of Naraku, happens to possess one of the objects necessary for Kaguya's revival. Oh. Oh, also, um... Since we're moving into goofs, I'm going to mention my own goof. There's one part where there's a song that shows up, and it's just, like, insanely loud for no reason. Mm-hmm. And it was so weird. It was like, why why, why didn't y'all audio balance this at all? I mean, did you like how we got a remix of the first opening? Oh, my God. <laughs> how dare you? How dare you? <laughs> how dare you? All right, goofs. Anyway. Uh, a chronological error occurs at the beginning of the film when Moroku explicitly refers to the whatever the heck this is. The bees. Oh, the bees by name. Yeah, I guess that was weird because like, he said their name. Like, he said, like, he specifically called them something. I was like, what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> however, Inuyasha and his group only learned the proper name for the insect swarm in season four when they are accosted by Seshimaru for killing one that he was tracking. Therefore, Moroku's knowledge is premature. Oh, d- But we're in season four. Yeah, but we haven't gotten that episode yet. Oh. Uh, I feel like we've had an episode where they were talking about Sashimaru tracking a bee or they were tracking a bee or something. I don't know. What don't regardless. Remember. Uh when Moroku discuss discusses about the dark desires in Kage's castle, his eyes are yellow, not blue. Oops. Uh, when Sango saw Kohaku escaping through the mirror, his kimono wasn't ripped off from when Naraku emerged from his back. Uh, and when Kaguya yelled at Inuyasha for abandoning his desire to become a full demon, Kaguya's ha- Kagome's hair top part was white, not black. What? It's probably just like shadowing or lighting type oh, thing. Oh, okay. But yeah, that is uh, Inuyasha the movie 2, The Castle Beyond the Looking Glass. Uh, yep. Next time, we'll be discussing episode 96, which of course is, a- is about Jock and Falling Ill. So, you know... Whiplash oh effect here. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jockin. Jockin's gonna get sick. 
Oh, no. And we'll find out how that all affects everything. Mm-hmm. But for now, well, that's going to do it for us. So if you'd like more from us, head on over to SeasonalAnimeCheckup.com or SAC.Cools, where you can find past episodes of this podcast and other podcasts like Seasonal Anime Checkup OVA. You can also find columns and reviews on the site as well. If you'd like more from Ann Ladium, go to AnnLadium.com. She's got columns and reviews. You can follow us on Twitter and TikTok at Anime Checkup. You can buy our books, One Shiny Moment, a critical analysis of Love, Life, Sunshine, and Hot Tubs and Pac-Man on Amazon.com. Uh, yeah, that's it. Next time, Jockin is going to get real ill. Ill. Jared's not ill anymore. Yay! That's true. Yay! That's why we're here. Yep. <laughs>